Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be having a look at Postgres full text search. We're gonna be learning the main concepts it takes to implement full text search within Postgres. We're gonna obviously look at a lot of examples and we're gonna have a look at the pros and cons of using full text search in Postgres instead of a dedicated search engine like Elasticsearch. So yeah, let's get right into it. So we're gonna be learning everything by example today. I've got a bunch of SQL scripts that we're gonna walk through and a bunch of points and we'll essentially talk through everything you need to know. The very first thing I will point you towards though is the Postgres documentation. The documentation here is very good. It's quite simple and easy to read. So I definitely recommend going through this. This is basically how I learn everything that I'm going to be teaching you today. And everything that I cover in here will be covered in the documentation in some place or other. I've just kind of picked out the things that I think are most important and reduced it in size. So yeah, let's get started. So the table we're going to be having a look at today is a table called product. This is just a, a table I use for one of my projects and it's just going to have a name and a description. That's the only thing that we care about. We don't care about anything else. That's what we're going to be searching in. I've just populated this with some data from ChatGPT. I just asked it to give me some Marvel names and descriptions of uh, shops and products. Just before we get into the full text search concepts and implementation, it is just worth mentioning quickly that there have been text search operators in databases and SQL databases for quite some time now. This is in the form of the like keyword or the I like for ignoring the case. So you might have seen this in the wild before, but basically my recommendation, or I think the general recommendation is just don't ever use this full text search, especially within Postgres is just you know as simple, but it's just much better. So don't use this. And, and here's the reason why basically you can run this. So let me just run this um, query. It's going to work fine, but you'll notice that it is an exact match. So this uh, is basically meant to search on the inspired word, but there are three kind of major flaws and this is all documented in the Postgres documentation here. And the first one is no linguistic support. So again, this is an exact match. So it won't match things like inspiring, which is the same word as inspired. It can't figure out because it doesn't understand that this is a language. It's just kind of, you know, uh, doing a contains search. Um, the second thing is that there's no ordering. Again, because it's just a contains match, it's a predicate. It either matches or it doesn't. So it can't really reason about weighting different search uh, results. And of course, for the same reason, it can't handle any indexes, which means it can be quite slow. So it can't really index because it's, there's an infinite number of possibilities within these percentages, which basically just means anything before or anything after. Um, and yeah, so it's just going to be slow. So it does exist. It has been around historically, but now that full text search is around, I basically just recommend always ignoring this and just move on to the to the full text search capabilities. So the first important concept that you need to understand is just a document. So Postgres uses the word documents, and this is just to mean basically a, a unit that you're searching. So this is usually a field or multiple fields within a row of a table. So in this case, for us, we're going to be searching across the name and the description. It could just be one, could be two. In fact, it could be across multiple tables, but we're just keeping it simple. Just one table, name and description. And if we just concatenate it like this and just call it document, this is basically a document. So whenever you see a document being referred, it's just the unit that you're searching. And the next thing to understand is basically how search engine works at a very, very kind of oversimplified level, which is you pre-process the documents and then you're gonna query against those documents. And within Postgres, there are two types, two types that handle that, and that's TS vector and TS query. So let's have a look at TS vector first. So TS vector is just a type, just like any other database type. It's, you know, you get text, numeric, dates, etc. TS vector is just one of those types. So I can take a string and I can cast it to a TS vector, but usually you actually wanna be using the function. So casting doesn't really do anything. You wanna use a function that's gonna do a few extra things and then it's gonna convert it to a TS vector. And what are those extra things? Well, that's basically the pre-processing. So when you run this function, it's gonna do roughly three things. It's gonna remove stock words. It's going to convert it into lexins, which we'll touch on what that is in a second, and then it's going to add positions and therefore counts. So when we look at this string here, um, this, the sentence itself doesn't make sense, but there are lots of words that basically are useless or almost useless when performing a search. And, and these are words like a and then, or these are not very useful when performing a search. They don't really give any meaning. And basically what Postgres does and what most search engines do is they'll just remove those words completely. This is all configurable within a dictionary. So there's a dictionary within Postgres that you can define these stop words and basically you can change them, but it has some kind of decent defaults uh, in, in place. The next thing is lexins. And this is basically taking a word and reducing it to its most base form, right? So the words run, running uh, and runs are basically all the same word. They all derive from the, the base word run. 
and therefore they should be considered the same word, same as satisfies and satisfy. So when you reduce these to the base word, it basically means you can normalize everything, which means when you're querying, you can normalize that word and it's much easier to, to search against. It's also much easier to index. We'll get into everything that it can do here. But if we just run this query now, 2ts vector, what you're gonna see is it's actually gonna return two words. So we have two words here, run and satisfy. And again, it's, it's basically the derived version of it in English. Um, and you can see the positions of these words. So this word run exists in the second, fourth, sixth position. The word satisfy exists in the eighth and 10th position. And what this helps with is things like ranking and, and weightings, right? So it basically shows the number of times the word is in the, the document and also where it is positionally. So that's what's gonna help there. The one other thing worth mentioning is this 2TS vector also takes in um, a, a language as the first parameter. And by default, it's just gonna turn into the, I think it's the system language, but you can also additionally just explicitly add that in. And that's just the same thing. Cool, so now that we've got our documents and we've essentially parsed them into something that's understandable, like we said, the second step is actually performing the query, right? So we go down uh, and for this, we have a TS query. So of course we need to, to, to parse it down in the same way, but later, let's have a look at the, the TS query type. If we run this um, running through TS query, it doesn't actually do anything again. We need to use a function. But the, the interesting thing here, just to, to point to, is if I try to do multiple words, so running uh, fast in um, and then convert it to a TS query, it's not gonna work. And that's because a query can't take multiple words uh, that form a sentence or a phrase, but it can take search terms. Um, and the way you add search terms is with logical operators. So running fast, it can't kind of understand that. But if you did running, you added a few logical operators, such as running and fast, it knows then how to deal with it, right? So it doesn't know how to basically connect those two words, but you can do and, there's a few other operators. I think you can do or, um, you can do things like followed by, so running followed by fast. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave a link to the documentation for the rest of them, but just know that it's always one search term. Um, but again, there are functions to help with this. So we look at the 2TS query, first of all, uh, and these all, again, are just taking in one uh, word. And they're just, this is just to basically show that this is still running the, 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 the normalization, the lexins, uh, and turning everything into run. So that works fine. And then there's actually a few different types of 2TS queries. Um, so if I go back here and I just actually just remove this and I look for all the different examples. So 2TS query, phrase, 2TS query, plain, 2TS query, and then web search. These are kind of the main ones. And these are basically helper functions that allow you to, um, instead of you know, uh, instead of being able to only pass in one word, you can pass in multiple phrases and it just kind of handles it a bit better for you. The web search one is basically meant to act as if it was a, a normal search engine. And what this allows you to do is instead of adding logical operators, you can add words. So you can see here, if I run this guy, I can pass in the and. If I leave that out, it's just gonna to default to and, but I can also pass in the English or, and I think it, it's basically the same queries that you can run in TS query, but in an English language meant to be mimicking um, search engines. So it kind of uh, gives you a bit more slack in terms of what you can put in. This is the one I usually use for, for search engines because it just works absolutely fine. You don't need to worry about handling the, the, the special cases or the, the logical operators yourself. But again, you've got full flexibility to do that if you want. Great, now that we have our documents that are parsed and we have our query, we basically just need to match them up. So how do we do that? Well, let's scroll down. There is a match operator. And this is basically this double at symbol. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select and then we're gonna take our TS vector function. We're gonna convert this into the, the TS vector, the, the pre-processed data. And then we're gonna go at at, which is the symbol. And then we're gonna pass in the search string. In this case, again, we're using the 2TS query to pass that in. We could just use the, a string straight up, of course, but um, we're gonna be using these functions just to help uh, to help with the, the issues that we've mentioned above. So if I run this, this is just gonna return a Boolean, true or false, right? So 2TS vector run and running. If I push in something else here, uh, hello, and I run this, of course, it's gonna come out false. Um, and this, yeah, this is just the same example just to show that run and running is gonna be matched. So the match operator just returns a Boolean. At this point, we're just returning a predicate, fine. How do you rank it? Well, you can just use the TS rank function. So all I'm doing here is I'm using a TS rank function. This takes in two uh, arguments, and this is basically just the, the search document and then the search query, comma separated. So you can see here the exact same two TS vector and the, the search query here. And if I run this in the TS rank, it's just gonna give me a ranking. If I change this to, to hello, so this doesn't match at all, it's gonna give me a zero. And um, if I run this back and I add, I think multiple runs, and I run it, it's gonna be a bit higher ranking than what I had earlier on. So this is basically how the ranking works. It's all within Postgres. I'm just gonna trust that, that it does what it's supposed to. Great, so I think we've basically got all the pieces that we need to start searching on the real table. So let's just scroll down 
and we're just going to be searching the actual table here. So we're going to do select name and description from the product. So that's just the exact same uh, table that we were looking at earlier on. Oops. And then we're going to add where, and we're just going to pop in our two TS vector, our double at symbol, and our search here. And we're going to be looking for inspired. We could also look for inspiring. You can notice that this returns 13 results. This also returns 13 results. It's exact same. Uh, inspires is going to return the exact same. So you can see the full text search working straight away. Um, you can also notice here that I've added coalesce here. It doesn't work well with nulls. So always make sure to coalesce anything that's nullable into an empty string. And yeah, that's it. If we want to add ranking or waiting onto that again, we're just going to add our TS rank function. So in this case here, I'm just adding it as a separate column. And then I'm just doing the rest of the search uh, as standard. And I'm just adding the order by rank here. So if I enter that in here, you can see that we've got some sort of rankings. In this case, I'm searching for Thor. We can see that in, in these columns, the, the Thor is actually in the description as well as the name. And the ones at the bottom, which is ranked slightly less, it's not in the name, it's just in the description. So you can see that the, the ranking kind of doing this, it's, it's magic there. And that's how you get around search. Now, of course, this is obviously gonna be still a bit slow until you start introducing some indexing. So you can start indexing and there's, there's basically kind of two main approaches to this. Either you wanna index it directly or you wanna actually just create a column and store it. There's advantages uh, and disadvantages to both. So if you index it directly, there's going to be basically just cleaner tables. Um, there's less storage, so you don't actually need to store the, the values. But of course, when you're, I think when you're searching, it might need to recompute the, the 2TS vector every time. I'm not sure about that, but that could make it a bit slower. Um, if you actually add it onto the table, it just means that it's, it's there easily searchable within the actual table itself but you know you're adding you're, you're you're essentially adding data that doesn't need to be in the table into the table so you might you know might not prefer that this is its syntax for both a few things worth pointing out i guess which is that um there's two types of indexes you can use one is uh, the the gin index and one is a gi i believe it's st indexes basically if you're doing full text search just go for the gin one that's the, the recommended one the the gist one i think it allows you to add custom data types and it you know allows you to change the indexing strategy or something along those lines we don't really care about that. Always use the gin for a full text search. And then this is just the syntax here for adding a column. So this is basically a column that will automatically be added, generated always as, and then the value, and then we're just saying stored here. So this stores the actual value there. Um, again, the, the only real disadvantage of this is that it's gonna actually be adding a bit more storage, but whichever one you use for most of the cases is probably gonna be fine. And there we have it. That's everything you need to know about Postgres full text search. The final things we'll just touch on, pros and cons. Obviously the pros, as you can see here, you don't need to add any additional infrastructure, no integrations, no additional code. It's just ready. As long as you've got the data here, you just basically run this query and you've got it. So it's just, you know, it's super, super simple, super easy to, to use. To be honest, I'd recommend anyone getting started with anything, just, just use this before bringing in additional things, any small project, and this will take you quite far. Um, there's no syncing of data like you might do with additional, uh, you know, uh, dedicated search engine. We might want to sync the data there. It's just, it's just super simple. So, for me, I've, I've moved all my projects to use this instead of you know uh, other dedicated search engines. And of course, the cons: there is limited uh, feature sets. So if you want things like fuzzy search or kind of you know aggregations and groupings and stuff, it's not out of the box going to be built in in Postgres where it might be in, in other tools. I will point out this uh, this plugin here, PG. I think that's Trigram, uh, and that's just basically a slightly different way of searching. Instead of using lexins, it does similarity matching. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to do kind of as close to fuzzy searching, it's not quite fuzzy searching as, as you can, you might check this out. Uh, and the other thing that I think is only really impacted on a really large scale is basically the, the scalability and, and performance. And that's just because dedicated search engines will be highly optimized for performance and scalability, whether that's you know horizontal or, or vertical scalability, they, that's basically what they're built for. So there is the argument that Postgres might not be able to handle this specific scenario as well as them, but from 80, 90, whatever percent of, of the scenarios, you're gonna be absolutely fine. And that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.